This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Previously on 10 Hundred, I've had an idea in the back of my head to create a custom deck of art playing cards. I'm just gonna delete this thing, erase this whole thing, start over, this sucks. Anxious thoughts of like self-doubt and self-loathing. Because the last thing I wanna do is like get to the very end and then they're like, we can't print this. This is shading, no shading. Let me know what you guys think of this. But the, is the black more popular? I got two options here. One, put them on my website. Option two is the Kickstarter route. It's something to think about as the project progresses. Is that everything I wanted to talk about? I guess so. So, the video came out, and man, you guys gave me a lot of comments. I told you guys I wanted to make this a collaborative effort. I wanted to bounce ideas off of you guys, but I was not expecting the amount of feedback that I got. This thing's been out two days, and it has like 67,000 views, and let me tell you, it's a little bit hard to collaborate with 67,000 people. <laughs> One of the questions I asked was, do you prefer the shading? Do you prefer the flat colors? I got a lot of comments saying, shading, bro, shading's the way to go, and I got a lot of comments saying, flat colors is the way to go. Kind of seems like shading is winning right now. But one comment I just wanted to highlight right here is from APN201. He kind of sums up a lot of the feedback I was getting. He said, clearly these cards are primarily for art, but there are some playability issues. The asymmetric graphics make it difficult to play with the cards as you need to be turning them the right side up in your hand. It's not a big issue with the court images themselves, but because the pips are not always visible, it makes playing difficult. That is true. I've been thinking about this from a like strictly art and design perspective, and I think I should have maybe put a little bit more thought into the playability. Also, sometimes when there is bleeding, you can possibly recognize certain cards from the side when they are in the deck. That's something I didn't think about. Some cheaters like seeing the little bit of art peeking out from the side, maybe knowing what you have in your hand. We can't have that. We can't have the 10 hundred deck of cards be the official cheater's choice. Hell no. I also put that poll out there on my community tab asking about the background because I was doing a few different things with the background in my last video. I asked, you know, do you like the white background? Do you like the black background? Do you like the navy blue background? And right now, the black background has a clear lead at 46%. You guys can still go vote on there if you want. And then we have this comment, which sums up what a lot of people were saying. It says, maybe reach out to Chris Ramsey. He's a magician, YouTuber extraordinaire. He's a card collector, and if he likes your stuff, I bet he would help. Well, a lot of you mentioned Chris Ramsey, so I guess we should talk to him. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, bro. Super excited to talk to you about this. Likewise, I checked your video out. Super dope. Thanks so much, man. I think you have like a unique perspective because you're a card designer, card enthusiast. You're also a magician. So some of the comments that I've been getting, first of all, is that my designs are not symmetrical mm. and I kind of messed up on the pips because like they're both pointing up. But if you're holding the card upside down. Right. I, I think the pips and the indices, so the numbers and the, and the, and the symbols are important to have have oriented in both directions. However, the picture on the face of the card, I don't think matters at all. What I think will matter with orientation is the back of the cards. If you are fanning out or displaying a deck of cards, even if you don't have any skill, you're gonna kind of just, you know, spread them on the table like this. You want that to look good. I even put this little gold foil on the edge of it so that when fanning, you could see that gold foil. And the picture sort of lines up. Now, if the back of the card is asymmetrical, this is gonna look clumpy, cluttery, and dirty. It's just gonna look a lot better if the back is both ways. The face, however, doesn't matter. The back of the cards should be symmetrical and maybe have like a border around the art. Yeah, and the border's important too, just for, uh, like you mentioned on your last video, they mentioned chipping. Mm -hmm. and and uh, you're right, it's not a good thing. And it's the reason I haven't printed any black back or face playing cards because as the cards get dinged and nicked up, kind of white back, you won't see it on a black back because the paper stock is white. You'll see like a white chip on it and your cards will look more used than they actually are. I put out a poll on my channel and I was like, what do you guys think? And black is like super winning right now. Mm -hmm. If I left a super beefy border, would that help mitigate that problem at oh, all? Oh, you won't have that problem at all. Okay. Yeah. As long as it doesn't go right
right to the edge, you're fine. That's super sick information to have. As you mentioned in your video, you're looking to go on Kickstarter, which I think is a great platform. Probably for playing cards, the best platform. But you can you can put stretch goals in. This is maybe something for your audience to decide as well, but there's, there's a lot of dope things that you can do with stretch goals. Like there's this, so they call these impossible bottles. That's a sealed deck of cards. Like there's plastic around that deck of cards. That is, Whoa. there's no visible way out of there. And the bottle is not tampered with whatsoever. There's no seams in the bottle. So this is handmade. And uh, and we sold those as just like a little art piece, which is kind of dope. Also there's this on the wall. If you have a look over here. Are those the uncut sheets those that the, I keep hearing about? Yeah, those are uncut sheets. They're just cool for art pieces. Again, they're just canvases and you can have them on both sides. So whether you want to see the face or the backs. That's cool. I definitely would love to get in on that action. Kind of wrapping it up a little bit. There's a bunch of extra little add-ons and stuff that you can do with the United States Playing Card Company. Sort of like crushed paper stock and gilded edges and embossing. And what do you love to see in a deck of custom playing cards that has some extra attention to detail and really wants to go for like being a piece of art as well as like a, you know, collection item or something like that? Uh, I would say a few things. First of all, crush stock is a must. That is, uh, it's not that expensive. It's just a small fee, but it makes your cards feel so much better and last a lot longer uh, through use. Secondly, I would say don't mess with gilded edges. Thirdly, as for the tuck case, which is the box that it comes in, we refer to it as a tuck case. These are probably, in my opinion, the most important part of your deck because this is how people are going to see it on the shelf, on the coffee table, in their hands. This is what's going to represent your deck. This is like a matte stock so I can hook you up with a guy that basically owns a company that does this and they work with USPCC. So your cards are then printed from USPCC, shipped to this guy, and then they're assembled over there. But it allows you to have an insane selection on stock and quality. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with a tuck case. Oh man, that's so, I didn't even know I could do that. That's so sick. Anything else you want to just drop on me real quick? Uh, want to see a magic trick? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you to do that to close <laughs> out. I'll show, I'll show you a quick one. So this is, uh, this is your custom bicycle. You're you're familiar with these, your custom bicycle deck. But this one's a bit different because there's like a slit through the middle. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a bit of a yeah. slit through the middle. And so I'll keep my hands out here where you can see them. And I'll take the card and it kind of looks like it's going through. And you might be thinking, oh, he's just, he's just putting it through the back. But no, it's actually going through the slit, as you can see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's, the, here's the interesting part is that without leaving frame, that's what? a solid <laughs> block of wood. How? How did you do that? That's insane. I'm so confused and I love it so much. <laughs> that was awesome. Dude, thank you so much. You have millions of subscribers. You're like a pro magician. You're a card enthusiast. Don't you have your own freaking TV show at this point yep. too? We got our own Man, TV show. <laughs> thank you for taking the time out to come and chat with me about this crazy project that I'm embarking on and I really, really appreciate it. No problem, dude. I'm a fan. I'm gonna follow this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see it through. I can't wait to see what you do with this and uh, hit me up if you need anything else. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. All right. Please. Well, Chris Ramsey gave me a lot of really valuable information, so I think it's time for me to revisit my designs because changes need to be made. Here we go. Between the 2,000 comments that I got on my original video and the expert knowledge that Chris dropped on me, my head was swimming with new ideas on how I needed to change my original designs. I simultaneously feel so much more confident moving forward with this project and I feel completely lost because I never realized how deep this rabbit hole is with custom playing cards. Okay, I have made some changes based on you guys' suggestions, based on Chris Ramsey's suggestions, and I wanna show you what I've done so far. First of all, it was brought to my attention that the King of Hearts has no mustache. So I gave my King of Hearts a little digital shave here. I have switched the orange stripe in the background to be a white stripe. I find it to be much more bold and graphic and geometric. If you notice the King and the Heart, what did Chris call them? The pips and the indices have been oriented so that if you flip the card, either way you can read them. Another thing brought to my attention in the comments is that this king is often referred to as the suicide king. Look at that guy, he's stabbing himself in the head. So on my design, I wanted to pay a little homage to that. I tried drawing like a hand sticking out and doing the deed, but it was throwing off the composition, it was throwing off the balance. So if you look closely here on his little scepter, you can see that he has his little smiley face getting just mm, right in the side of the head with a little dagger there. And down here, real subtle like on his cloak, the pattern is a little face with a little stab 
Gabby McGee going on into that noggin. And then on the Jack of Hearts, I made a quick little change. Somebody let me know that the Jack of Hearts actually is a one-eyed Jack. You can see him from the side profile here. Like when you look at the Jack of Clubs with him, two eyes are facing forward. So on my Jack of Hearts, instead of making him have like a profile, I just threw an eye patch on there. So he's still a one-eyed Jack. Little Easter egg to the OG Jack of Hearts. Something else that I tried out. I tried making him symmetrical. Now this took me a super long time to try and figure out how to do this thing. But I don't know if I love it. I'm still feeling like the original portrait style, I like a lot better. It seems a little bit more bold, a little more in your face. The art is bigger. One of my shipping guys, Nick, was like, this whole middle section just seems really busy and confusing and clustered. And I definitely agree with him. But let me know what you guys think of the whole like portrait versus symmetrical thing. So those are the changes that I've made so far. Now I think I wanna move on to the clubs or the spades maybe. But first, I gotta let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one dynamic platform to help you build a beautiful website. Whether you're an artist or a designer, photographer, or a freaking custom card maker, you deserve to have a beautiful website. I personally have been using Squarespace for years and years and years to build my website. It's where I host my art portfolio and have my online shop. With Squarespace's beautiful award-winning templates, it's never been easier to build a beautiful website. You just take your awesome content, drop it into their amazing templates, and you're off and running. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to be an HTML guru. But if you ever do run into any issues, they have 24 seven customer support and they can help you out. So what are you waiting for when it comes to making a beautiful website? You need to have it ace up your sleeve. <laughs> I should leave the magic to Chris Ramsey. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash 10 hundred for 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. We've updated the designs. We've created a visual roadmap of how we want these cars to kind of look, hopefully in the end. Now I'm ready to design another suit. It's time to jump back into drawing. Here we go. As I move farther and farther into this project, I'm starting to gain a better understanding of where these cards are gonna end up. I want all these characters to look like they belong in the same deck of cards in the same world. But on the flip side of that coin, it means that I have to reach deeper and deeper into my well of ideas to find something that makes each card unique. I have such a strong structure with these cards because I know what the final destination for the art is gonna be. I know what my color palette is. I'm referencing the original deck of playing cards, making my own versions of these incredibly iconic images. But the real challenge with working within that framework is finding new and original ideas that don't step too far outside of the bounds of what my final goal is and how I want these cards to look in the end. I'm so thankful I approached this from such a collaborative aspect and bringing you as an audience along with me so that you can give me your feedback and your ideas. If I would have just gone for this and tried to make this whole deck without referencing you guys or without talking to incredible experts like Chris Ramsey, I don't know how this project would have ended up. But even after just releasing that first video, I know for certain that this project is 100% better because of the way that we're approaching this as a community. Okay, I've been drawing for four days and I wanna show you guys what I've done so far. Now, in the OG deck, the King of Clubs has a sword, he's got a mustache, and you can see both eyes. In my King of Clubs, sword, baby, mustache, baby, both eyes just blazing into your soul. But I'm really feeling all the different patterns and crazy clothing, and then the pips and the indices are white. Just to kind of flip it on its head a little bit, you expected them to be black? Oh, no, 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 Queen of Clubs. She's got a little sneaky dagger under her cloak. She's got her own hand of cards that she's been dealt. What's she gonna play? What kind of crazy maneuvers does she have going on? And then here is my Jack of Clubs. I wanted his like medieval helmet to also kind of be a helmet version of some of my more classic 10 hundred characters. And then that brings us to the Ace of Clubs. I've stuck with that theme of taking the actual shape of the club and doing like a crazy art mashup. Chris Ramsey told me like the Ace of Spades is really special. So I think when I do get to the Ace of Spades, I gotta figure out how to up the ante even more, but I want all the aces in my deck to be a strong art card. So we got our clubs done, we've got our hearts done. When you put them all together, they look a little something like this. Our deck is starting to come together. It's starting to develop its own sort of visual identity. Huge shout out to Chris Ramsey for taking the time out to come and be a part of this project. You guys definitely go check out his channel. Chris gave me so much information. I edited it down so much for this video. I actually have a longer edit of me and Chris's conversation over on my Patreon if you guys want 
wanna check that out. Otherwise, this video would have just been like 40 minutes long. Subscribe to him, check his videos out. You probably already have, he's like a big deal. <laughs> well, anyway, that's it for me. I'm 10 Hundred. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Oh, jeez. Jeez, oh, Pete's. These cards, man.